Hey everyone, it's Rachel Wolfson here. I'm at the Apex Developer Summit in Amsterdam today, and I'm so excited because today I'll be interviewing Julio Santos. He is the CTO and co-founder of Fractal ID. Hey Julio, how's it going? Hey Rachel, pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for joining me today. So Julio, first question, can you explain the main objectives of Fractal ID and what you guys are doing in the blockchain industry? Uh, sure, absolutely. So, I mean, the blockchain industry is, is all we know. It's, it's where we started from day one, and it's where we've worked with hundreds of different clients and, and projects. And, and this is a very particular space in many ways. It's got, a, it's got its own ethos, it's got its own type of user, and it's got its own tech stack that needs to be built towards. And what we are is an identity verification company, first and foremost. And we learned to do the hard work in identity verification. Before we started to build, we started to understand. And what that did is that we are now thriving and we're not part of this growing graveyard of decentralized identity projects that all they became was deserts because nobody bothered with a mess that is identity, with a mess that is regulatory compliance, and with a mess that is user support. And we have, and uh, that's, what's, that's what's causing us to win. Um, what we're building now is something that we call the IDOS, so the Identity Operating System. And it's the culmination of all of our learning and all of our experiments and all of our products in production in the space, where it is a chain agnostic protocol for self-sovereign data management. So what it does for users is just like, you know, folks say it's your keys, it's your coin. Here it's your keys, it's your data. You are in control of what your profile says, who gets to say things to it, who gets to see what's in there, and you can always at any point edit, delete, create data for yourself, which nobody else can. For dApps, we are making sure that your data is something that can be shared with them with your consent without you having to download extra tools like data wallets or without you having to be doxed on chain like with soulbound tokens. Um, and, and the best part about this is that we're not building it for ourselves as a way to provide our service. This is an open system. We're building this with Near and with Gnosis and with Quill and with Aleph Zero. It is a common good where other um, identity verifiers like us can come in and permissionlessly, without me want me needing to let them do anything, issue credentials for their users if their users want that to happen. And we're doing this because it is just the right thing to do, which incidentally is the best possible way of complying with data privacy regulation. Just, you know, don't be an ass, treat your users with respect, give them control over their data. Right. Can we also talk about the importance of decentralized identity in terms of Web3? And why are we seeing that now, specifically? Well, I can't really tell you why we're seeing that now, but my suspicion is because folks are kind of coming to terms with the fact that this is no longer, you know, the Wild West uh, where nobody's looking. We're under a huge scrutiny. I've started hearing in the past year, year and a half, for the first time in this industry, calls for self-regulation, you know? Um, so let's figure it out ourselves before the big hammer of the law falls on us. And I think that identity is a core part of that because today, a lot of the blockchain is still about financial products. And those fall under umbrellas of regulation that, as it stands today, DeFi isn't really prepared to deal with very well. And that is why we build what we build. It is, uh, I mean, we've been trying to launch a system like this for the past five years, and nobody cared, ever. And we started building it last year because finally, somehow we went, there was a click in people's heads that identity would be core to Web3 experiences. And I think that that is because, even though it's poorly done in Web2, identity is also core there, and all of the value that's generated is primarily generated around identity, and folks are start starting to understand that if we're gonna do more than just finance and compliance, but other types of value generation, that bringing identity optionally to Web3 is something that is going to unlock all of that. But let's talk a little bit about how Fractal ID is addressing user privacy and security in the blockchain space. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, how much time do you have? Uh, I, um, to me, that's a very, very dear topic. I'm, I'm CTO, right? It is my responsibility to make sure that the users that we have stay protected. I am right now 
doing something that should be illegal, which is I am in control of a database with over a million passwords that I can get access to and leak. I am a trustworthy person, I like to think. I am a capable person, I like to think. In fact, in six years, we haven't had a single data leak, which I'm very, very proud of. But I'm still vulnerable to, you know, the classic $5 wrench attack, and it is still possible if somebody went through me to get access to all of this, this should not be possible. What we're doing with the IDOS is we're making sure that the data that is stored is not something that we can see, that anybody can see. It is encrypted using public key cryptography with the user's key so that only they can actually decode this data and then potentially share it with somebody else. So what this does is also because it is not written on chain, what this does is it allows for key rotation for you to change the password that you want to use to re-encrypt your things in the future. And what it does is it completely dissolves this honeypot where normally if you get access to a Web2 company, to a Web2 database, you can get access to everything that is in there. But with the IDOS, it doesn't really matter even if in the unlikely scenario that you find a way to get in, each single piece of data has its own key that belongs to the user. It is not a honeypot in any way. They are as private and secure as they can get. And what's interesting about the way that we're building this is that there's obviously a lot of um, fantastic decentralized solutions, uh, decentralized identity solutions and storage solutions out there. Take IPFS or Ceramic, right? Those are all very, very useful. But what folks aren't really thinking about so much, and I guess we are because we're in this space, is precisely requirements with regards to, say, data locality with a GDPR. You can't, I can't simply, you know, use IPFS as my database for my user data because that will violate about like 20 provisions. And what we're doing with the IDOS is we're making sure that the network decentralizes in accordance to data uh, protection regulations throughout the world. So, for example, node operators right now have to sign agreements with the GDPR standard contractual clauses with us to ensure that the data is processed in certain ways and that the data is hosted in certain places. But you know what? Even if it weren't, it's all encrypted. Folks are safe. And this is something that nobody has built before. And it's something that it becomes, it's becoming harder and harder to deal with. Folks are looking to offload the storage. That's what we're here for, identity or otherwise. Has it been challenging at all to ensure compliance with certain data rules and regulations in different regions? Well, I mean, in the, if you ask me in the short term, I'm going to say, no, it was a breeze, but that's kind of because we've been doing this for five, six years. And we've always had a very, very smart legal team that is very excited about crypto and the possibilities that it brings. And we're constantly trying to find ways to present solutions to regulators where they can see that their goals can be met in a way that is better for everyone if only decentralization is more adopted. So we are, you forget what you know, and we are, we've, we've forever researched exactly how to deliver technical solutions that are advanced and decentralized without scaring away the regulators. And in fact, being able to show them how this furthers their goals even more because they're not here to screw us, they have a mandate to protect us. So right now, Fractal ID is being utilized for for dApps within the Web3 ecosystem. But do you hope to see maybe some Web2 companies adopting the technology as well? Well, I mean, as a business person, sure. I suppose that's revenue and that's adoption. But to be honest, I don't really care. I would much rather see those Web2 companies become Web3 companies and then adopt our service. Um, we, um, one of the things that we found out and why we build the way that we build is um, because companies in the blockchain space have very different needs. And one of them is they built their backends on chain. They're not Web2 backends. They can't call OAuth APIs. And so all of our tech stack and all of the way that we deal with our clients, with our users, with our community is geared towards the Web3 ethos. So we don't do any outreach or entertain any leads from the Web2 space because it's really not what we care about, to be honest. And we're not going to need them because Web3 is going so fast. Right, right. So, Julio, I'd like to know a little bit more how XRPL stands out from other blockchain platforms and why it's a good platform to leverage for use cases like Fractal ID. Yeah, that's a great question. So, I, I think that 
If you pay attention, you'll see plenty of examples in XRPL that show that it was built with a very specific ethos and care in mind. Take deposit authorizations. You can make it so that only folks that you allow can transfer XRP to you. Or token trust lines. The, all of these are primitives of the network. And what that does is it makes sure that you can't just be sent a token and suddenly be seen to own a token that you never wanted in the first place, right? So this concern and this, this realization, this insight that your address is also part of your identity and ergo it should also be fully yours to control is something that if you pay attention you will see in the XRP roadmap from the beginning. And now with this new proposal, um, the XLS40D with the, the DIDs on chain, it's yet another confirmation that decentralized identity in the broadest sense of what that means, and that is including what you do on chain, is something that XRPL pays attention to. What we're building is eminently integratable with the DID primitives in XRPL, and we do look forward to working together to making sure that our solution is also available there. Got it. Cool. So thank you so much for joining me here at Apex Dev Summit and for the Web3 Deep Dive podcast. It's been wonderful speaking with you. If our listeners want to get in touch with you or if they want to learn more about Fractal ID, where should they go? What should they do? Well, I would tell them to check out IDOS.network and definitely check us out next week at DAPCON and then Token49. Token We're going to be all over in the next coming months. Uh, we have a lot of enthusiasm in the community for what it is that is finally built and delivered and i can't wait to share it with everybody so live demos upcoming website is live this is going to be available in a couple of months and it's going to be amazing awesome i'm really excited thank you thank you it was a pleasure thanks for having me <laughs> thanks